recent trip to Baltimore, we caught up with Dr. Robert Wood, a pediatric allergist and professor of pediatrics at the Johns Hopkins Children's Center and director of the Division of Pediatric Allergy and Immunology at Johns Hopkins University. A world-renowned expert in the treatment of peanut allergy, Dr. Wood is also the author of the book, Food Allergies for Dummies. If I had hives eating peanut, I'm probably less than two years old because most peanut allergy shows up in the first two years of life. And most of it actually occurs on the very first exposure, the very first time that child's given a bite of peanut butter or sometimes um, uh, just a, a dab of it off their mother's finger while she's making a peanut butter sandwich for their older brother. They are typically a very dramatic and obvious reaction where within moments of getting that dab of peanut butter, hives begin and the unknown at that point is whether this is going to stop with a few hives, whether this is going to progress to something that could be dangerous or life-threatening. So with the very first hive in that situation, um, we would say you need to see the doctor now. You need to do it by ambulance. You need to be seen in the emergency room. Uh, this is not a phone call to your pediatrician. This is go to the hospital uh, where uh, any of the life-saving measures that might be needed are available. The next step in the process is you should be leaving the hospital uh, with a prescription in hand for self-injectable epinephrine, one of these pens that you carry around all the time uh, in the event of your next reaction. And the next thing is you need to be seeing your pediatrician um, uh, and then uh, typically your pediatric allergist to have a more in-depth evaluation and more in-depth uh, advice about the precautions you need to be taking to avoid future reactions. That part of it doesn't need to be done immediately. That could be done uh, over the course of the next several weeks or months. As long as you got that prescription in the emergency room for that uh, epinephrine to keep with you all the time. If you uh, have Benadryl available, it would be very appropriate to take that. Uh, it would not be appropriate, however, to run out to the local drugstore, get some Benadryl, come back home, see how, how your child is doing, and uh, not have made the 911 call or the trip to the emergency room. The Benadryl for a mild reaction may be perfectly effective, and if it's one of these that only includes several hives, uh, the Benadryl may be all you need. Uh, Benadryl or other antihistamines, though, have no life-saving uh, capabilities. So if your throat is going to swell, and especially if it's going to swell to the point of being dangerous in terms of cutting off your breathing, uh, an antihistamine will have no ability to reverse that, and that's why uh, the emergency room uh, is the, uh, really the key to the treatment. So when you are, uh, arrive at your doctor, or, or mo more likely the emergency room with that uh, first reaction, um, you should expect to be evaluated immediately. Uh, this is um, a, a type of situation that can get out of hand very quickly. Um, so you need to yell and scream at the triage nurse that my child's having an allergic reaction. We need help right now. You should be promptly evaluated by the nurse and the physician, and uh, they will then determine uh, whether this reaction is progressing to a point that you need additional medications or not. Uh, the um, uh, observation period uh, should typically be at least four hours because sometimes reactions appear to settle down and then um, uh, flare back up a couple hours later. Um, we call that a two-phase reaction and about a third of food reactions follow this two-phase pattern. You should then be sent home um, with this prescription for medication for epinephrine that you would have on hand. Uh, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the event of a future accidental reaction. So uh, uh, epinephrine is the medicine that has life-saving capabilities in an allergic reaction. Uh, people are kind of used to this because they heard of somebody who has a bee sting allergy who carries epinephrine with them or someone else that has a peanut or other food allergy who's been given a prescription for epinephrine. And this is the medication that will um, uh, shrink down the swelling that may occur in your airway that, that is the most dangerous uh, uh, part of an allergic reaction. It stabilizes your blood pressure and in the most severe allergic reactions you'll go into what's called anaphylactic shock where your blood pressure drops and epinephrine can stabilize that as well. So once you get uh, your next appointment with your pediatrician or your allergist, um, additional testing uh, should be performed that will confirm your um, uh, peanut allergy. 
That can be done either with a skin test or with a blood test. Um, um, we would typically do both tests because they both provide useful information. And then, um, uh, just as importantly, um, we would want to have regular follow-up uh, to have that allergy reassessed and uh, see if it's one that uh, is following the usual pattern of becoming more severe over time or whether you may be in the lucky 20% who outgrows their allergy over time uh, where uh, uh, repeat testing at some uh, regular basis would uh, uh, determine whether you might be in that uh, uh, group of patients.